Taking out a mortgage is one of the most significant financial commitments you might make in your lifetime. So whether you are a first-time buyer or you're looking to remortgage, understanding the intricacies of UK residential mortgages before you take them out is critical. So with that said, in this video, I will cover key considerations to help you navigate taking out a residential mortgage in the UK and make informed decisions. Now, before we dive into the video, let me make a disclaimer. Please know that I'm not a mortgage broker, a real estate advisor or consultant or a financial advisor. So whatever I say in this video should be considered as my opinion and should not be taken as an advice. Please do your due diligence research or contact a mortgage broker or a financial advisor or a real estate consultant if you need any help with your mortgage application or you need any help understanding how mortgages work here in the UK. Now, you might be wondering why am I making this video after I just made this disclaimer? Well, Mazon and I recently bought our first newly built dream house here in the UK and ever since we bought a house I've made videos about our house buying process and some of my viewers have actually reached out to me about buying their house here in the UK and some of my viewers has made it known that me sharing our house buying process has ignited the light in them of wanting to buy a house here in the UK and they've also started thinking about buying a house here in the UK with a mortgage. So that is why I feel it is my moral responsibility to come here and sit down with you guys and talk to you guys about things to consider before taking out a mortgage and things we considered before taking out a mortgage so that you'll be able to understand the gravity of taking out a residential mortgage here in the UK. Now, in this video, I'm focusing on a residential mortgage because we do have a residential mortgage and obviously our house is a residential property. That's where we live. So with that said, the first step you want to take when you are looking to take out a residential mortgage is to familiarize yourself with the type of mortgages, mortgage terms, and the payment structures available in the UK if you live in the UK because we bought a house in the UK and I'm talking about buying a house in the UK. So my focus is on UK, not on any other country. As the length and structure of your mortgage can significantly impact your financial situation. Now, before you can take out a mortgage in the UK, you must have a deposit. Especially if you're a foreign national living in the UK on a visa, typically you will need at least five to 20% of the properties purchase price as a deposit. Now, the higher deposit you have, the better mortgage deals you'll be able to assess, which can save you a lot of money in the long term through low interest rates. Now, according to money supermarkets, the sweet spot, right, for a residential mortgage here in the UK is generally on a loan to value ratio of under 80%. Now let's talk about the length of mortgages here in the UK. You see, most UK mortgages offer a term of 15 to 35 years. A longer mortgage term reduces your monthly repayments, but it increases the total interest you would pay over the lifetime of the loan. Now this brings us nicely to the types of mortgages here in the UK. Now the first type of mortgage I would like to share with you guys that's available here in the UK is something called fixed rate mortgages. Now this mortgage offers a stable interest rate for a set period of time, usually two, three, five, or 10 years. Now this type of mortgage is actually ideal if you want security of knowing exactly how much money you will be paying for a particular period of time. We also have something called the variable rate mortgage. Now the interest rate can change drastically with a variable rate mortgage because it is typically in line with the Bank of England's base rates. Now at times having this kind of mortgage can actually lower your monthly payment if the rate should fall. And it also carries a risk of higher payments if the rates should go up. So the rates I'm talking about is the rates set by the Bank of England. So anytime you are hearing, oh, the Bank of England's base rate has increased, is now 5% or it has reduced, is now 4.5%. So just know that some 
people's mortgages there in the UK are dancing like the way the Bank of England <laughs> base rate is dancing. So if it's high, their monthly mortgage repayment will be high. If it's low, their monthly mortgage repayment would be low because they have a variable rate mortgage. So this is something you want to consider when it comes to variable rate mortgages. Now moving on, another type of mortgage I would like to share with you guys that is available here in the UK is something called a tracker mortgage. So similar to a variable rate mortgage, it specifically tracks the Bank of England's base rate plus a set percentage. Now this mortgage can be beneficial when the base rate is low but it is not beneficial when the base rate of the Bank of England is high. Furthermore, there is also the interest only mortgage, which is a type of mortgage you can only pay the interest each month and then the original loan amount, that is the principal, will be due at the end of the mortgage term. Now for this mortgage, in my opinion, and maybe based on my own financial situation, I feel this option is risky and it requires a solid plan to be able to repay the principal because why this option will reduce your monthly mortgage repayment since you are only paying the interest. You will need a strategy on how to repay the principal amount at the end of the mortgage term. So for instance, let's say you took out a mortgage of a hundred thousand pounds for 10 years to buy a house in the UK. Now during that 10 years, which is your mortgage term or your mortgage length, you will not be paying anything to the principal. You will not be paying any money on that £100,000 principal to reduce it. You will only be paying the interest on that £100,000 every month, which will be low. And then after 10 years, the bank will now ask you to pay the 100 k that you borrowed. Now, based on my financial circumstances right now, that will never work for me because where would I want to get £100,000 <laughs> to pay it back? So I do feel like this mortgage option is risky, but some people have this mortgage options here in the UK because it just helps them pay a low monthly mortgage payment. So if you are going for this option, put a plan in place on how you want to pay the lump sum principal at the end of your mortgage term. Now, the last but not the least type of mortgage I would like to share with you guys is something called a repayment mortgage. Now, with a repayment mortgage, it has a structure where your monthly payments covers both the interest and part of the principal. By the end of your term, you will fully repay the mortgage. Like, you will not have to pay a lump sum money like the way you would if you take like an interest-only mortgage. Now, one more thing is that each mortgage type has its own advantages and disadvantages. So it's essential that you just consider which one aligns with your financial situation and your risk tolerance. Now, when choosing the kind of mortgage you want here in the UK, you can actually mix and match. I will explain what I'm trying to say. So when my husband and I took out our mortgage, we decided on a fixed repayment mortgage. So basically, we fixed the mortgage for a particular period of time which was five years we fixed our mortgage for and we went with a repayment mortgage so what this means is that for the next five years our monthly mortgage repayment covers both the interest and part of our principal so just like what i mentioned earlier when it comes to fixed mortgage where you can fix it for a term so instead of going for variable on how we want to pay the interest on our loan that the mortgage loan we went for fixed so we got 4.9% on the money we borrowed to pay our developer to buy our house from the bank. Now, we actually fixed it for five years and we chose to be paying it in such a way that we are paying off the principal, right? And we are also paying off the interest on the loan. So that's why I say you can mix and match. So that is we having like a fixed mortgage and then a repayment mortgage together. So you can actually have a variable mortgage and a repayment mortgage, or you can have a variable mortgage and an interest only mortgage, you know, you can just mix and match. Now, when it comes to taking out a mortgage, it is crucial that you consider the end of the mortgage term from the beginning and plan accordingly. So think about the end from the beginning. Even before you take the mortgage, think about the end. You see, when taking out a mortgage in the UK, you actually want to have a repayment strategy. For instance, if you have like, an interest only mortgage. You want to ensure that you have a clear plan of how you want to repay the principal when 
it comes to the end of your mortgage. I didn't even get what I mean. This plan might include that you are saving for the principal so that by the time the term of your mortgage comes to an end, you can just pay the lump sum money from your savings. Or you have investments you want to use to be able to clear the lump sum money when your mortgage comes to an end. Or you just decide to sell the property to pay off the mortgage at the end of your mortgage term if you have an interest only mortgage likewise it doesn't matter the kind of mortgage you have or how you have mixed and matched your mortgage just consider making overpayments on your mortgage if you are allowed by the lender without penalties you see overpayments can reduce the overall term and the amount of interest you would pay now when we were taking out our mortgages or something we considered we wanted a mortgage that can allow us to overpay on our mortgage because we plan on paying our mortgage in a couple of years so we took out our mortgage for 25 years but we want to pay it off before 25 years that's our goal for our mortgage now a lot of people will say oh paying off your mortgage is a bad idea each to their own whatever works for people who will not choose to overpay on their mortgage and choose to wait however long they have their mortgage for each to their own for me and my household before my husband and i took out the mortgage we knew like we had a conversation about it that hey this mortgage we're taking out we're going to pay it off within this particular amount of time so we have a timeline we want to pay off our mortgage but we took out the mortgage for 25 years but we have a timeline we want to pay off our mortgage and from the day we took out the mortgage we have always been making overpayment okay to be honest not the day we took out the mortgage like it was after like a couple of months like we started overpaying on our mortgage this april yes because we just needed that buffer to rest financially to build up our emergency fund and to settle some things you know when you're moving houses there's a whole lot of expenses that comes with it and we need to sort out some things in relation to black tax so we started overpaying on our mortgage this april because we want to meet our timeline we set on how we want to pay off our mortgage so before we took out this mortgage I used to follow Humble Penny. I shared their page on this platform before, like on a video I made. They paid off their mortgage in seven years in the UK. So before you take out a mortgage, please go to Humble Penny. You can't be watching all their videos, all what they have to say about mortgages. Because before we took out our mortgage, my husband and I, we used to bench what their videos. Their videos were so helpful. So it helped us draft a strategy of how we want to pay our mortgage before we even took out the mortgage that's why i felt it was important for me to that i make this video and have this conversation with you guys like anyone i've inspired to want to buy a house in the uk you know it's just like me sitting there as your friend just you about what to consider before you take out a mortgage now moving on thirdly you want to research on remortgaging options yes because if you take out a mortgage in the uk depending on what kind of mortgage you took out and the length you took out the mortgage for at a point in time, you would have to remortgage. Now, you want to think about remortgaging even before you take out the mortgage because remortgaging involves switching to a new mortgage to secure a better interest rate and avoid higher interest after like the introductory period ends on your first mortgage you took out or whatever mortgage you've taken out when it ends. Furthermore, have an exit strategy before taking out a mortgage. Plan on how you want to handle the final years of your mortgage. You know, if your income should decrease or maybe you are going to be close to retirement, will you still be able to afford the mortgage repayment? You know, all of these things, you want to think about it. You know, you want to have like an exit strategy. You want to consider if my income should increase or I'm close to retirement and I've not finished paying my mortgage. Do I want to downsize to a smaller property? Do you get what I mean? All these things, you want to think about it. If my income should increase, do I want to increase my payments? Like, do I want to be paying extra on my mortgage Like, I can pay it faster? Lastly, think about life after a mortgage. I feel you should not take a mortgage that the mortgage would take your better years out of you. So think about life after the mortgage. You know, think about your financial situation once your mortgage is fully paid, how you want to redirect the funds that were previously going towards your mortgage repayment. You see, planning for this transition can set you up for a more secured financial future. So before you take out a mortgage, think about all of these things I just mentioned. If you're taking out a mortgage with a partner, maybe a friend, a sibling, a parent, or a spouse, 
please have this conversation with this person or however many people you're taking out the mortgage with. Think about the end of the mortgage from the beginning. You know, the meaning of mortgage means life debt. Like, you would be in debt for life. That's what mortgage means. But it doesn't have to mean that to you. You can take a mortgage and pay it off like humble penny debt. In short, there's this lady lady in the US I used to follow. I'll leave her page for you guys. That lady, I think they paid off their mortgage in five years. They have like 12 months to pay off their mortgage. Yes. I've been following that lady's journey. Even though we took our mortgage, I used to watch her videos. She used to share strategies and how she's looking to pay off our mortgage. So please, before you take out the mortgage, even if you have a mortgage and you want to pay it off or you're thinking about the end from the beginning, follow Home Opening and follow that US lady I'm talking about. They'll give you a whole lot of insights. Now, when it comes to applying for a mortgage in the UK, lenders would always assess your financial health through various factors. Now, the first factor they will use is like your credit score. So your credit score is actually a significant factor in whether your mortgage will be approved or not. A higher credit score increases your chances of actually securing a mortgage with favorable terms. So check your credit report and resolve any issue you have before applying for a mortgage. I would strongly advise you to do that. If you want to learn how to build your credit score without taking out a loan here in the UK, I do have a video on that. Please go watch it. I'll link it to this video for those who are looking to build their credit score. Please and please, before you apply for a mortgage, work on your credit score. You don't need to have a perfect credit score, but just have a good credit score. Now, the second thing lender would do is that they would check your income and affordability. So lenders would usually scrutinize your income to ensure you can afford the monthly mortgage repayment. They would typically prefer that your mortgage payment do not exceed 25 to 35% of your gross monthly income likewise they'll check your employment history so lenders will look for stability if you are self-employed or you have a variable income you would need to provide more evidence of your earnings such as tax returns and business accounts so they would really scrutinize your employment history and stability so you want to refine that very well before you apply for a mortgage Likewise, they will look at your deposit size. So the size of your deposit will reflect the mortgage deal available to you. Most lenders would require that you have 5 to 20% of the property value as a mortgage. You know, a larger deposit would always unlock better interest rates to you and better deals to you. Now, if you are a foreign national living in the UK on a visa, most lenders would require that you have at least 10% of the purchase price of the house. Now, let me touch on understanding your affordability because this is very important. Now, in the UK, mortgage lenders would actually assess your ability to afford a mortgage before even offering you a deal, like I've already mentioned in this video. They will look at your income, outgoings, any debt you might have. Most lenders apply a loan to income ratio, which typically means you can borrow up to 4.5 times of your annual income. So before buying a house here in the UK, it is actually essential to be realistic about what you can afford. So just take your income and times it by 4.5 and see what it gives you. That will give you an idea of what you can afford. Now, when it comes to mortgages in the UK, it doesn't mean that lenders would usually offer you 4.5 of what you can afford. No, like they'll look at other things like your outgoings and if you have any other loans, you know, like I mentioned earlier, they'll always look at it. At times, lenders will give you something lower than what you got when you times your income with 4.5 and at times they'll be willing to give you higher than what you got when you times your income by 4.5 because they feel you are a more credible borrower or they feel like they can trust you with more money basically depending on your credit history your employment history your income and your financial footprint basically now moving on lenders in the uk will stress test your ability to pay the mortgage if interest rate should go up if it should increase they would they will try to do a stress test on your income based on that and they would also test if you can repay the money in case your circumstances should change so it is wise to do your calculation and consider your lifestyle your future plans and any potential financial changes that might come up 
with your finances basically now if you have watched this video to this point you can only know one thing it means you find the video valuable so please give the video a like and share the video with someone you think will benefit from this video now let's move on to my sixth talking point now before lenders offer you a mortgage they would conduct like an affordability assessment and they'll do a stress test on your income or your finances i mentioned that earlier now for the affordability assessment they would examine your income your outgoings and any financial commitments to ensure that you can afford the mortgage now and <laughs> in the future now for the stress test lenders will stimulate potential increases in interest rates to see if you will still be able to afford the monthly mortgage repayments basically this test is actually very important if you choose a variable rate mortgage they would really focus on this for you because you know for variable mortgages the interest rate used to flung to it so i would strongly suggest that if you're taking out a mortgage to take out a mortgage that is well below your stress test affordability because it just offer you a greater financial flexibility and security it reduces the risk of financial stress or strain from unexpected expenses rising interest rates or changes in income likewise taking out a smaller mortgage than what you would normally be able to afford or what the bank is telling you can afford allows you to manage your debts more effectively potentially paying it of fast time and maintain a better work-life balance you know you don't have to be working multiple jobs just so you can pay off your mortgage it also frees up more money for you to save or invest or to build an emergency fund or to help family and friends financially more you know it will help you to achieve long-term financial goals while maximizing stress you see you're not financially stressed and saying oh i've taken out a mortgage how do i pay it even we that we took out a mortgage that was way below our affordability after i was got the mortgage i was financially stressed i'm not like to you i was financially stressed i made a whole video on it if you want to know more about that you can go watch it i'll link the video to this video for those who are interested in watching it so now imagine if we are taking out a mortgage that was like on our level of affordability or higher than our affordability what would have happened to me <laughs> If I'm taking out a low mortgage that we can afford and I'm still stressed about it. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Now, when we did our stress test, the bank actually revealed to us that we could afford a house that was a little bit, like a couple of thousands, over 400,000 pounds, and that we could afford to pay over 3,000 pounds monthly for our monthly mortgage payments. It was good news to our ears because the house we were buying was way, 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 way lower than that. <laughs> However, this did not change our decision. We didn't decide to go for a more expensive house. We still chose to stick with the house we wanted to buy and the house was way, way below that. And we decided to make overpayment and pay the house quickly, you know wisdom is profitable to direct because the lender has told you you can buy a house of five hundred thousand pounds does not really mean you should have buy a house of five hundred thousand pounds you can buy a house of like three hundred thousand pounds or like four hundred thousand pounds it's not wise to actually go with what the bank says it's actually always wise to go with a mortgage that is way 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 below what the bank is telling you can afford so the bank telling you that you can afford like 5k a month when it comes to your monthly mortgage repayment like <laughs> go for a monthly mortgage repayment that you'll be paying like maybe 4k or 3k a month now this our monthly mortgage payment i'm talking about that they say we can pay over three thousand pounds a month is interest plus paying on the principal so it's actually a repayment mortgage this is not like an interest only mortgage so it just goes to show you that we were actually in a good position to buy a house that was over 400 k to be fair <laughs> but we chose to buy a house that was way 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 below that now my seventh talking point when it comes to things to consider when you're taking out a mortgage is actually the cost and fees and potential hidden expenses when it comes to taking out a mortgage you see taking out a mortgage involves more than just repaying the loan so you just don't say 
oh, let me just sign my mortgage documents and then I'll just be paying the mortgage repayment or maybe paying my mortgage. No, you must also consider several additional costs. Now, the first cost you want to consider is arrangement fees. We paid an arrangement fee. I think and our arrangement fee was like £999. So many lenders will charge a fee for setting up the mortgage for you, which can range from a few hundred to over a thousand pounds. Now, these fees can sometimes be added to the mortgage balance. When we took out our mortgage, I actually told them to add the 999 pounds to our mortgage, but we just felt why well, was paying interest on 999 pounds? So we just called them up and then we just paid it in cash, like we paid the 999 pounds, we paid it in cash. So that's just that one not add to our mortgage. We are looking of ways to reduce the mortgage, not to add to the mortgage. So that one was off it. So you will need to pay arrangement fees. Some people don't pay this, and some people used to get like cash back. Some banks will give them the money back after their mortgage falls through. And they pay, I think is it their first mortgage repayment, then the bank give them money back. I don't know why we didn't get this. Now the second fee you might have to pay is something called evaluation fee. Now, lenders may require a property evaluation to ensure its worth and the loan amount. Now, the cost would usually vary, but typically it ranges between £150 to like £1,500, depending on the property value and the lender. Now, let's move on to interest rates, basically how you can navigate interest rates. Now, interest rate plays a pivotal role in your mortgage cost, so it is vital to understand how it works. Now, when it comes to clients in mortgage, even if you're using a mortgage broker, do your due diligence research. You know, always compare the annual percentage rates of charge, which includes the interest rates and any fees to understand the true cost of the mortgage you're taking out. You see, many mortgages here in the UK will come with an attractive introductory rate that revert to a higher standard variable rate after an initial period of time. So you just want to be prepared for this and consider remortgaging when the introductory rate period ends if they will allow you to do that. So just do your due diligence result when it comes to the interest rate. That's why I told you at the end of this video, think about the end of your mortgage from the beginning. Now, the last but not the least talking point in this video would be protecting your mortgage and financial future. Now, life can be unpredictable, so you want to consider how to protect your mortgage and financial future, basically. You see, you want to take out life insurance policies. Yeah, you want to take them out. You see, before you even consider taking out a mortgage, take out a life insurance policy. <laughs> You see, life insurance policy ensures your mortgage is paid off if you die during the term. You know, it provides peace of mind for you and your family. Like, before we took out our mortgage, we took out a life insurance or we started looking into life insurance. Because to be fair, our life insurance came through after our mortgage, but it took us like a year to get a life insurance policy because we moved houses, we had to start the process all over again. It was a daunting process, but I would say, the reward is the peace of mind you will get knowing that you have a life insurance in case anything happens, you know. It will help you know that your family is fine. It will help you know that in case anything happens to you, you know, the mortgage will be paid off and the debt will not be hanging on someone else's neck. Now, I will not sit here and tell you guys that taking out a life insurance policy was the easiest thing to do. It was like a walk in the park. No, it was a tough talk. A tough conversation for myself, for my husband, for our life insurance broker, the person that did our life insurance for us. Because you'll be hearing things like, in case you die, in case you, you jump and you fall, or in case you'll be hearing scenarios that you say, I want you, oh my Jesus, what brought me to this place? Like, why am I having this conversation of if I die, if I live, like, you know? But I will tell you, the piece that comes with having a life insurance is unmatched. The 20 pounds you are paying for premium or the 50 pounds you are paying for your life insurance policy is what it compared to if something happens to you and then your family members are now running around on how they want to pay like 500,000 pounds mortgage. <laughs> I'm laughing or I'm trying to make jest of it, but 
it's not a funny situation it's not a funny situation at all now when it comes to protecting your mortgage or your financial future you also want to consider taking out home insurance please take out home insurance and if your home insurance comes to an end take out another one i think home insurance is always yearly please take out a home insurance it doesn't make sense that you have a house worth hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds and you don't have home insurance home insurance is like 350 pounds per year please take out home insurance like we don't pray for the unforeseen but the unforeseen happens like imagine if today those carry out and go and you don't have home insurance you're not paying a mortgage on the house that you don't have carry and go or you paying a mortgage on the house that's is flooded or something has happened to the house or let's say the house burnt down or something terrible just happens to the house and the house is no longer in existence you're paying mortgage on it and you still be looking for how to rent house or how to another house you know if you have home insurance your insurer will cover it up also consider income protection you know we don't pray for things to happen this happens you see this insurance covers your mortgage payments if you are unable to work due to illness or injury or even if you lose your job for a period of time so please consider income insurance also look into critical illness covers now this kind of cover will pay out a lump sum if you are diagnosed with a severe illness helping you to cover your mortgage or other expenses now regarding life and critical illness insurance the earlier you take them out when you are young and healthy the better and cheaper they are now basically for this point my emphasis is to harm yourself with different insurance policy you know before you take out a mortgage please take out insurance policies before taking out the mortgage these insurance policies may or may not come cheap but the peace of mind they will give you is unmatched now in conclusion taking out a residential mortgage here in the uk requires careful planning and a good foresight by understanding the types of mortgages available evaluating your financial situation and thinking ahead about the end of the mortgage from the beginning even before you take out the mortgage you can make a more informed decision that will benefit you in the long run please always seek professional financial advice tailored to your circumstances to ensure you make the best decision when it comes to choosing a mortgage option for your needs and to secure your financial future from the start. Now, if you want to know how the UK mortgage application process works or the documents you would need to apply for a mortgage in the UK, watch the video on your screen right now.